I've been talking a lot about men lately, which should really come as no surprise to any of you. <laughs> Back in October, I really wanted to connect with my friends more. And then it started becoming this thing where I'm like, I actually want to connect with my male friends more. So I started a book club. One of our more current books that we read dealt with this topic around the decline of men, how men are, God, it sounds so mean, but it's like men are not getting smarter. They're not getting more successful. They're definitely not getting more social and how society is failing men. So as a man, I just, I thought I should learn about my inevitable downfall. <laughs> Growing up, I had such a hard time relating to men and relating to male figures in my life, whether it was my uncles, my cousins, guys at school, especially my brother's friends. Oh my God, I felt like an alien. I felt like nothing I could say or do would be what was appropriate. It was like I was always masking. I was always code switching. I was always on guard trying to be something that I wasn't. I just felt deeply, deeply uncomfortable in my youth around male figures. I found so much solitude with the gals, the gays, the femmes, the weirdos, the artsy kids. Those are and were my people. Those are the people that I felt like I could just be myself and there was no consequence to being authentic and vulnerable. And it's funny that like all of this, all these systems, all these structures, all these rules were created by men, white, straight, cis men, and now again is seemingly harming them and is their own downfall, which is kind of ironic <laughs> and poetic even. The pillars of a good relationship are as follows. Trust, empathy, communication, honesty, respect, care, love. You need all of that to have a good relationship with a person. You need all of that to be a well-rounded person. And frankly, I think no wonder I have all of these wounds and society has all of these wounds with men because they were not bred, they were not taught, they were not nurtured to be all of those things. The stereotype of masculinity, which was built on the back of misogyny and patriarchy, is toughness, it's strength, it's success. The way that you get that guaranteed is by not acknowledging other people's feelings or other people's humanity. So circling back to the beginning, while reading this book and while discussing these topics with other fellow men, What's fascinating to learn is that all of the men that I surround myself with now and the ones that I do trust had good role models growing up. It is that simple. Emotional, vulnerable, playful, consistent. Dare I say a man can be loving and successful? <laughs> Madness, craziness, loony. And it's just fun to talk about these things with your friends. I find that the depths of friendship, the depths of connection grow by collectively wanting to understand not only each other, but the world around us together. And I'm the only gay one in the book club, and I will say that brings a unique experience to it as well. I had a hard time, even after coming out, trusting other gay men. I still sometimes have a hard time trusting gay men because I have those residual feelings from growing up about just being skittish around masculinity in general. Misogyny does not stop at the queer community. There is plenty of bigotry embedded in our DNA. It is why I don't date a lot. It is why I don't fall in love easy. It is why I get scared when I start to because I just keep having those feelings growing up. Like, what if you're secretly like all the others? And that's something me and my therapist love to unpack frequently. <laughs> I see gayness and queerness, I see difference and femininity as the strongest thing that there can be because to pursue both of those that means that you are pursuing vulnerability and truth despite a world that tells you to conceive yourself to hide your emotions to hide who you really are you defy it you burst through the gates and shout at the top of your lungs despite the consequences people like that are leading the way they're leading the charge. They're bringing us into the better future that we all will collectively benefit from. And that to me is nothing but wonderful. It feels like a utopia. I hope we can get there collectively sometime soon. Like I've always said, I personally enjoy navigating conversations like these in therapy, which is why I'm super excited to talk about this video sponsor. 
BetterHelp. BetterHelp is wonderful because it makes starting therapy much easier and less intimidating for people. Whether it's over the phone, a video chat, or just messaging, you can choose which therapy makes you most comfortable. BetterHelp gives you access to a wide range of therapy expertise that may otherwise not be available in your area. To get started, you'll just fill out a simple questionnaire with some basic information, and then, in as little as 48 hours, BetterHelp will match you with one of their over 30,000 credentialed therapists. And if you feel like your therapist isn't a great fit, you can switch anytime at no additional cost. It's really no problem. Okay, now do me a favor, click the link in my description or visit betterhelp.com slash Franta. That's better, H-E-L-P.com slash Franta. And join the over 4 million people who've used BetterHelp to live happier and healthier lives. By clicking that link, you help support this channel and it gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. So you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Again, that's betterhelp.com slash Franta. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a peaceful week and I will see you super soon.